This is NBR Today. This year has seen a long overdue correction on the value of stocks, but Shareholders Association Chairman John Hawkins still thinks they're likely to give the best returns of any asset class. Yet he's concerned at a number of issues in the New Zealand market, mainly the lack of good quality companies with a sound track record willing to list, a spate of takeovers along with partial takeovers, and schemes of arrangements which don't favour retail investors. Mr Hawkins says about 100 companies would be good candidates for the NZX, with a $100 million dollar plus turnover, which are reasonably sized companies by New Zealand standards. But Mr Hawkins says the people involved in them don't like the prospect of shareholders looking over their shoulder or continuous disclosure. So they tend to take the easy way out and not for trade sale or takeover. Anecdotally, um, we're told that quite a few institutions don't like dealing with companies that are going to have a market value of less than 200 million. That's pretty high. And that doesn't encourage smaller companies to get on there and expand. I think they need to set their target a little bit lower on that. But bear in mind that what I've said um, in the last month or two has been around quality companies listing. We don't want the rats and mice that went off to AUCX because no one else would have them. The world's largest furniture retailer has finally confirmed it's set to open in New Zealand. Inter IKEA Systems, the worldwide IKEA franchisor and owner of the IKEA concept, will grant the Inca Group exclusive rights to explore expansion opportunities in New Zealand. Inca Group is a holding company that controls 367 outlets of IKEA. Inca Group says it will provide more information about its future operations in New Zealand early January when its global CEO is in the country. A new liquidators report reveals the Ministry of Education has a $22 million debt claim over leaky building compensation and has so far given liquidators $80,000 to investigate the collapse of former Hawkins Unit H Construction North Island. An initial receiver's report in July for the McConnell Group of Companies indicated there could be $70.2 million in remaining equity once all secured intercompany receivables are realised. In May this year, H Construction North Island was ordered to to pay the Ministry of Education $13.5 million by a High Court judge because of leaky building defects at Botany Downs Secondary College. Grant Thornton liquidators Tim Downs and Stephanie Jeffries replaced BDO liquidators Andrew Bethel and James Greenway earlier this year. Well, the economy slowed to 0.3% GDP growth in the September quarter, confirming expectations that the second quarter pace of 1% could not be sustained. It's led the ANZ Bank hopping off the fence and changing its call for the next OCR reading from the Reserve Bank. Now, the bank's forecasting a 0.25% cut in the official cash rate in November 2019. It says with a further 50 basis points of cuts to come over 2020, taking the OCR to 1%. It says there are multiple drivers of this changed call, but in short, they come down to a weaker outlook for medium-term inflation, risks around global growth and liquidity, and the proposed capital changes for banks. It says... Our view of the New Zealand growth outlook has not materially changed. The GDP reading of 0.3% was the lowest quarterly growth rate in five years and took the annual outcome to 2.6%. This was well down on expectations, which ranged from 0.5% to 08 in the latest NZIER consensus. Some 12,000 New Zealand export companies generate $60 billion in annual exports, but more than 10,500 of those make less than $5 million in exports and only 265 above $25 million. NZ Trade and Enterprise, which gets annual operating funding from the government of $173 million plus a further $24 million for international growth fund grants, interacts with 5,000 companies but homes in on its so-called Focus 700 group, which helps value-added companies. Its mission is to help them grow bigger, faster, better. But there's been long-term criticism, a lack of ambition by some Kiwi business owners to grow beyond a certain size. MBR's Fiona Rotherham spoke to its chief executive about what makes a successful exporter. Oh, look, I mean, the formula is there uh, for a successful company and exporter. Yeah, Is there good quality governance? Might as well start at the Head of the fish, is there good quality governance uh, with an outside-in uh, perspective? Is there good quality leadership who are seasoned uh, and capable? Uh, is there a strategy? 
uh, where there is clear definition of the value proposition? Uh, is there focused uh, market strategies based on, on that strategy? Uh, if it's a value-based company, is there enough customer empathy and market development uh, going on around that company? Uh, and the, to- and the total equation, are there good people? And is there a good f- uh, supply of investment capital available? Startup Dawn Aerospace, which builds reusable rockets for satellite delivery, has raised $3.35 million from Kiwi, American and Dutch investors. The money will be used to commercialise its satellite propulsion systems and begin development of its Mark II space plane. The Kiwi Dutch company makes reusable rockets designed to carry small satellites into space. Each rocket is designed to be reusable and capable of many flights a day. Successful testing of a Mark I space plane was completed in August this year and development of the Mark II has started with support from Callahan Innovation. Dawn Aerospace's flagship spacecraft, the Mark II space plane, is expected to take flight in 2020. So to tomorrow. Well, for the second year, NBR launches its exciting radar series, showcasing 25 innovative Kiwi companies enjoying or aiming for global success. They are New Zealand's wealth creators. And that is NBR Today for 2018. Thank you for watching. From the NBR team, please have a happy and safe Christmas, and we'll see you again in the new year. To unlock your two free articles a week, head to nbr.co.nz.